right. Tomorrow night, we got Terrence Crawford, 31 and 0, 22 knockouts, taking on Julius Andongo, 22 and 0, 11 knockouts. Um, in a title unification, Crawford and Dongo will be for the IBF, IBO, WBA, WBO, WBC, and the ring, World Super Lightweight, or Junior Welterweight titles. Winner take all. Whoever wins this fight is going to walk out of there with six belts IBF IBO WBA WBC WBO and ring magazine or ring uh, belts so winner take all man um, Terrence Crawford is fighting for his status as a pound for pound fighter and also as a boxing great when one day he decides to hang them all up. Julius Ndongo is fighting for an entire country. He's fighting for a people. And um, that's a big deal. Julius Ndongo is a lefty. He stands five foot ten. And he represents a different kind of party for uh, Terrence Crawford in the ring on a Saturday night. And while Crawford has fought taller guys, um, he dominated Victor Postal or Postal, take your pick. But Ndongo's, he's more athletic and much more awkward than Postal was. And in that lies, sometimes in mystery, when you don't know what you're facing, that's your advantage in a fight. Um, what Ndogo likes to do is he loops, he's, he's southpaw, he, he loops his left hand in multiple directions when he throws it. And he also likes to throw a sweeping right hand behind it that you, that you gotta keep an eye out for. And I think that's the key. Crawford, the key for uh, Ndongo is he doesn't have the greatest, I would say, hand speed. So Crawford is going to, he's going to see that left hand from most angles. But if Ndongo can find the right angle with the left hand and then the right follow-up angle, with the right hand shot, the sweeping right. It could be an interesting fight. He, he doesn't have enough power or hand speed, but I, but I say the power part with caution because in some fights when he's landed his power shot, he's gotten guys out of there and you're like, well, man, got these 11 knockouts but if he lands a good shot on the money and he gets full extension don't get me wrong I think he can hurt anyone um, and Dongle telegraphs a lot of his shots and I think Crawford will be able to see when he does that as I stated earlier so the key to this fight for Ndongo is with his awkward approach. 
Um, I do like Ndongo's jab to the body. He needs to throw it off. Um, if you look at his fight with uh, Troyanowski, first round knockout. I'll see if I can find a copy online and leave it below. The punch looked exactly like when Manny Pacquiao landed the one punch knockout on uh, Ricky Head. I mean, same, it almost looked identical. I mean, it, it, it was it was a beauty. I mean, oh man. However, in this fight, I'd like to see Ndongo not take the lead against Terrence Crawford and try to entice Crawford to come in and then try to counter Crawford. I know it sounds kind of weird, but I think there might be a little action there for him if he can get Crawford to commit. In some fights, Ndongo, he'll take a step back to slip a punch and then he'll come back to do damage. And, th and this is what I'm talking about. He doesn't have a lot of knockouts, but it, 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 I'll call it sneaky power. He's got sneaky power in there and we have seen Crawford staggered in the past by smaller guys. Um, Ndongo fights big, that's one advantage. He doesn't make himself small and, and take away his uh, physical advantages. I think that'll help him because in most fights, Terrence Crawford, he, he towers over guys. Um, uh, while, uh, once again, Victor Postal was tall. John Molina has some height on him. Thomas Delorme, all of those guys are like five foot ten or above. At, at least they're listed at those heights. But I don't, I don't think any of them fight as tall or as athletic or as awkward as Ndongo. So the question for him is how is he gonna handle the switch, the switching of uh, Crawford. Crawford likes to switch from orthodox to southpaw. If I'm him, him, I take what Terrence gives me. I mean, if the body's open, shoot your shots to the body. Um, that's the only way that Ndongo is going to be able to get situated uh, offensively. So he might not work with a lot of offense, but he's going to come and make you work for yours so he in other words he, he he does like to apply pressure in this fight I'm not asking him to step backwards if, if, if you see Ndongo start to step backwards he's gonna lose the fight um, going backwards I should say take a step backwards counter but still be in range like a, a winky right always in range to land your punches but but not really running not really moving back but just kind of taking uh, steps, that's what he needs to do. If I'm Crawford, this guy is so unorthodox that Terrence Crawford needs to be careful when he kind of does the switch hitting, when he switches from southpaw, southpaw to orthodox and vice versa. So, it's a good fight, um, but you have to favor Terrence Crawford um, to turn it up, to turn it up in the mid to late rounds and, uh, and, and and win convincingly. But just remember one thing, Crawford's fighting for, uh, as he's building his legacy, and Nongo's fighting for a country. And at 34 years old, he understands this is his shot. Even if, if Terrence Crawford wins and vacates and moves up and Dongo has to look at this as his one and only shot I, I wish I was in Nebraska because not that these fights are competitive but if you look at the star power on this car just the star power alone would attract me to to go to uh, 
Nebraska. Man, I would have ate the interviews up. I would I would have got plenty of interviews too. Oh well. I mean in the lineup you got Mike Yes Indeed Reed. You got Alexander Vosdick. You got Dillian White. You got Bryant Jennings. You got Mike Alvarado. You got Shakur Stevenson. And you had Nicholas Walters, um, which, I mean, just those names alone. I, I, I'm going to speak on Walters in a second. So Dillian White is taking on Malcolm Tan. And, and for you diehard boxing junkies, I, I couldn't believe it either when I saw it. Yes, we're talking about that Malcolm Tan, a guy who, <laughs> man, he thought was long gone. I mean, he, he was gone for like nine years. And he's come back and he's had, uh, I think, two or three fights. He's either won one and lost one or, or won two and lost one. But, <laughs> so so it's interesting. It's going to be interesting to see what Malcolm Tan has. And it's going to be interesting to see what Dillian White brings coming over across the, across the pond, across the river, however you want to put it. And um, if he wins, I'm sure there's something, something cooking for him. So we'll see what, what we're going to do is we're going to see what Dillian White is made of. We're going to see what Mike Alvarado has left. And we're going to see how Bryant Jennings responds, how he's recovered. So if you have ESPN3 or you have Xfinity, you can actually watch the stream of these fights. Um, on ESPN3 or I guess you sign in through Xfinity and you can watch them that way. That starts at 6.30 p.m. Eastern. I'm not sure which fights they're going to show. The regular ESPN card with Crawford and the um, Cole feature will start at 10 o'clock p.m. Eastern. So check them out. Now a few notes. Sean Showtime Porter, he is off the McGregor Mayweather card. Um, Sean had a, a family situation, a death in the family, and uh, he decided not to fight. And so he'll be replaced with your Dennis Ugas. And Ugas will take on Tomas Dolorme. So, and it might turn out to be a better matchup. I, I, that, 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 that might be a good scrap. Um, Nicholas Walters. He is off the Terrence Crawford card. He called in the other day and said he had a 101 degree temperature and he picked up a cold from his friend and then he tried, um, from his son I should say, and then he Continued to train, but he was unable to train, and uh, he couldn't run, do his road work. And <sighs> what's wrong with this guy? I mean, maybe he is sick, but I don't know. Uh, Nicholas Walters, I mean, the fall from Greece. <sighs> anyway, there's one thing that I speculated. And, and you remember, you heard it from me first. Not Dan Raphael, not Boxing Scene, not Ring TV. Remember I said Andre Ward might wind up with top rank because I think that Rock Nation is going to fold as far as boxing is concerned. Well, something interesting happened. You know how Premier Boxing They'll put a show on, right? And they'll have Austin Trout, a premier guy, Danny Garcia, uh, what's the trainer name? Virgil Hunter. Um, they'll have they'll, uh, uh, Sean Porter. They'll have premier boxing guys serve as guest commentators to go along with Brian Custer and whoever else. And, but, that's how you do it. I mean, you have your own folks. So, 
Golden Boy has a card. Of course, they'll have the the, the, the god awful Bernard Hopkins um, as a guest commentator sometimes. So on and so forth. So you get the top rank. Top rank has had uh, it, well in the past they had uh, Jesse Vargas and lately for their ESPN shows they've had Timothy Bradley top rank fighter right well Timothy Bradley is not commentating with Teddy Atlas for this fight and if you remember Bradley he did the Lomachenko fight he did the uh, Pacquiao fight so what gives well guess who's commentating now it's Andre Ward now <laughs> this is a top rank show Andre Ward doesn't fight for top rank right so why not bring in a top rank guy well remember how I told you that all of a sudden Bryant Jennings signed with top rank and Jay Prince is his manager and then I, I told you about and then we found out I should say that Shakur Stevenson who everyone thought it was a done deal uh, I think Mayweather promotions I think Mayweather himself said I come to see uh, Shakur Stevenson and he's going to be with part of the money team or whatever the case may be and then my man said, hold on for a second, pump the brakes. Next thing you know, Shakur Stevenson signs with Jay Prince and Andre Ward. Well, they got to deal with who? Top rank. So, Jay Prince has Brian Jennings, takes him to top rank. Jay Prince has Shakur Stevenson, takes him to top rank. Jay Prince also has a guy named Andre Ward who just happens to be replacing Timothy Bradley. I mean, think about it. Think, like, he's not top, right? Why would you bring him in? I'm telling you, the influence that Jay Prince has and the, and the good relationship he has with the Bob father, Bob Aaron, if... Rock Nation gets out of the boxing business. You have to believe that the, the, the favorite to get Andre Ward would be Bob Arum and Top Rank. And remember, you can go back, I don't know, 10 videos. Remember where you heard it first. Not Dan Raphael. <laughs> Not boxing scene where everybody seems to love to go. Not fight news. Not ring TV. You heard it here. So I'm going to keep taking credit. Um, last thing. Uh, so it looks like Vasily Lomachenko versus Guillermo Rigondeau may or may not happen December 9th in New York if negotiations break down and Rigando does like he did before they gave him everything gloves ring size all that stuff and any eh, I don't want to do it so if it doesn't happen again then Plan B would be for the silly Lomachenko to fight Orlando Salido. That'll be on tap. Now, as I stated in the past negotiations, Rigo asked for a bunch of things in his favor. Got them all. I think all except maybe one. Or maybe he got them all. But he declined. He declined the fight. Then he goes on to talk shit whenever. Lomachenko has a fight already signed. Then he goes on Twitter, fight me, fight me. And I understand it's not necessarily him 
you may have a, a Twitter administrator, but the point is, dude has never came back and said, well, that wasn't me talking. So, it's him. <laughs> Let's put it that way. Now, listen, I don't have, a, I don't have many listeners. Now, I don't have a, 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 a thousands and thousands of subscribers. But the ones that do listen, I know are intelligent. And you are intelligent enough to know that this has always been the Cuban way of doing things. Jan Pablo Hernandez, Luis Ortiz, Erislandi Lara, Guillermo Rigando. I mean, they all, they, they do all this talking and then they find a way not to fight the top guys. And then on top of that, they don't fight enough so, I'm hoping that Rigando signs the fight because it'll be in New York and I'll be there. You know, if it's, if it's Salido, then I'll watch it on ESPN or ABC or whatever channel. But I, that'll be in LA. I won't be, at, uh, be able to go to that more than likely. But to me, Rigo, Rigo's a. Uh, his back is against the wall. I mean, if if he doesn't sign, if Rigo doesn't sign to fight Loma, who's he going to fight? Jesse Magdaleno? I mean, what about the Moises Flores rematch? Fans have been begging for that one, right? <laughs> Give me a break. Um, I'm going to do something in my next video that I said I wouldn't do and it's uh, I'm going to discuss um, the event that's coming next Saturday um, I'll be watching Miguel Cotto card on HBO and if I get the opportunity I'll probably try to watch the Nathan Cleverly versus uh, Badu Jack neither one of them deserve this vacant title, but I think that might be a good a good fight. So uh, outside of that, I think I'm going to stop it here on this one and then do another video uh, tonight or tomorrow or a few days from now about the other thing, the event next week. So um, so make sure you check out the fights. Once again, if you have ESPN3 or Xfinity, um, you can watch the undercard fights. I'm hoping they show the Dillian White, Malcolm Tan. I hope they show the Bryant Jennings. I really wanted to see the Nicholas Walters fight because he, while he would have been fighting a guy who didn't have any power, uh, enough power to hurt him, at least we don't think, um, he would have been a guy that might have hung around, fifth round, sixth round, seventh round, and it would just be interesting to see how Walters reacted to not being able to get a guy out so easy. So. Maybe it is best that he uh, got sick or whatever the situation is. But anyway, 6.30 p.m. on ESPN3. Um, you can use Xfinity to somehow sign into that or try to catch it on a stream. and uh, Or maybe Top Rank will have something. I don't know. And then also um, at... 10 o'clock p.m. Eastern will be the Terrence Crawford card main event winner take all. I also have the uh, Mayweather, Floyd Mayweather's um, conference call from yesterday. Check it out. And also the um,
You know what? There's another place you can catch. I think there's another place you can catch the undercard fights. But anyway, if 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 I find out any additional information on that the undercard, because there's a lot of talent on there and a lot of questions, um, I'll leave it. One question you should be asking is not necessarily what's going to happen. But if everybody goes chalk, like what's next? Like Tilly and White wins. Like what's next? That's a key question for him because it, 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 there could be so many answers to that. Same with Bryant Jennings. If you win, what's next? I know Bob Aram is talking about trying to get a uh, Jennings versus Parker. Maybe they match. Maybe they'll match up Jennings versus uh, Dylan and White. Something tells me Louis Ortiz, Louis Ortiz is going to get the shaft and all of this, and he might wind up fighting one of these guys. Um, Terrence Crawford, what's next if he wins? Because it's like you pretty much cleaned 140 out, which is not saying a whole lot. There's 140s hasn't been strong at all. Do you move up to 47? So there's just so many what's next questions for for the guys who uh, who are on this card um, last thing is I think tonight Friday night oh boy there's something I'm forgetting something I'm forgetting to talk about um There's some fights on ESPN Deporte uh, at 7 o'clock p.m. tonight. Also, they'll replay Crawford versus Gamboa and Crawford versus Postal on that ESPN Deporte. Um, and live boxing at 10 o'clock p.m. tonight. That's what it is. Alberto Machado, 17 and 0, 15 knockouts. Uh, versus Carlos Morales, 16, 1 and 3. So that's that's live from uh, Puerto Rico. I'm sorry. That's going to be on ESPN 2. The Golden Boy. That'll be on ESPN 2 as well as ESPN Deportes. And. Uh, That's what it was. That's what it was. Can't forget about that. So check those fights out tonight. And we catch you on the next one.